Welcome back. In this video we'll be building an inclusive OR gate circuit using two NPN transistors. Recall that the functionality associated with an OR gate, here's its input output table or truth table, is that whenever both of its inputs are zero or low or false, its output's low. That's what we have right here. Input one is low, input two is low, and the output's low. We can move to the second row in its table where input 1 is low but input 2 is high. And according to the table we should expect the output to be high. And it is. Moving to the third row in its table, input 1 is high, input 2 is low, and its output should be high. And lo and behold it is. Moving to the fourth row in its true table is input 1 is high, input 2 is high, and the output should be high. That would be this scenario. Let's look at the schematic and build the circuit. Taking a quick look at the schematic, we'll have two normally open momentary buttons to serve as our inputs to our OR gate circuit. And each of those momentary buttons will have an LED through a 1K going to ground to indicate whether our input is high or low. They'll mirror one another. And then coming off of those momentary buttons, we'll have a 10K resistor going to the base of the transistor, 10K resistor going to the base of the other transistor. And the way this circuit works is you can think about it in terms of parallel switches in a circuit. That if we push the top momentary button, if we close this, then we have VCC runs down through the 10K to the base of this transistor, turning it on, making it so it'll conduct. Well, it has a connection from VCC through this wire down to the collector of that transistor. And then it also has a connection from the emitter directly into 330 ohm resistor LED, the output LED. So if we turn on the first button, there'll be a path from VCC through our transistor to our output LED. Likewise, if we release the top button and push the second button, we go push the second button, we'll have VCC, it'll travel down, turn on this transistor. It has a connection from VCC to its collector, to its emitter, and its emitter is connected through a piece of wire all the way down to, once again, that 330 ohm resistor and the output LED. So regardless of which, which button you push at any given time, that will be sufficient to turn on the output LED. And if you push both buttons down, well then both of these transistors will conduct and send current to the output LED, just like an OR gate. Let's build the circuit. The first thing we'll need to do is connect VCC to the upper right hand corner of the first momentary button. Connect VCC to the upper right hand corner of our second momentary button. Then we'll need to come off the lower left hand leg of our momentary button with a 1K with an LED with its cathode toward ground. We'll need to do the exact same procedure off of the second momentary button off of its bottom left hand leg, 1K LED with a cathode to ground. I've already added in, I've connected the left and right rails of the breadboard, added in two normally open momentary buttons, connected the side rails, the upper rails to the lower rails in this type of breadboard I'm using, and I've added in the two NPN transistors. Let's go ahead and get our inputs circuitry set up. We'll need a piece of wire connecting the upper right hand leg of our first momentary button to VCC like that. And we'll need a second piece of wire connecting the upper right hand leg of the second momentary button to VCC. Then we'll need a 1K resistor off the lower left hand corner of the upper momentary button. It's in the same row as the lower left hand leg of that momentary button pointing toward the ground rail. Then we can add in an indicator LED with the cathode facing the ground rail. The anode connected in the same row as that 1K resistor. Like that. 
We need to repeat the same procedure for the second input button. That's what it should look like when it's finished. Returning to our schematic, on the lower left hand leg of our momentary buttons, we need a 10K resistor and a piece of wire to the base of a transist of one of the transistors. We need that for both momentary buttons, 10K to the base. 10K resistor connected to the lower left hand leg of our momentary button. The leg of the resistors in the same row is that 1K and in the same row is the lower left hand leg of our momentary button pointed toward the bottom of the breadboard. We do the same thing with the second momentary button. So we have two 10Ks pointed down toward the transistors. Now we need a piece of wire connecting this 10K to the base of the second transistor. We need a piece of wire connecting this 10K to the base of the first transistor. The wire goes in the same row as the leg of the 10K resistor. And it goes down to the base of the second transistor. That's coming from our first momentary button, 10K, wire, all the way down to the base of the second transistor. Need another piece of wire from this 10K to the base of the first transistor. We have that second 10K. There's our first momentary button. Here's our second momentary button with the 10K with a piece of wire going to the base of the first transistor. That's how the wires is in the same row as the base of that transistor. This green wire coming from our top momentary button is in the same row as the base of that second transistor. To return to the schematic, at this point we have our input buttons taken care of. We have our 10K with our wire running to the base of both of our transistors. Now we can move on to connect VCC to the collector of this top transistor. I'm using 2N2222. You could use 2N3904 or BC547. And as long as it's a smaller scale NPN transistor, you should be perfectly fine building this circuit. But we'll need VCC going to the collector, the row, that our collector of this transistor is in. Then we'll need a piece of wire from the collector of that first transistor to the collector of our second transistor. Piece of wire, the collector of this first transistor to VCC. VCC, piece of wire to the collector, or the row to the collector of this first transistor is in. Just like that. Now we'll need a piece of wire from this same row that the collector is in down to the collector of the second transistor. Piece of wire. Just like that. Collector of the first transistor to the collector of the second transistor. They're connected. This is how we're obtaining a parallel style circuit with this OR gate. We just ran the wire from VCC to the collector of the top transistor and a piece of wire from the collector of the first transistor to the collector of the second transistor. Now we need to connect the emitters of the two transistors together. We need a piece of wire in the row that our emitter of our top transistor. We need that piece of wire to run down and connect to the emitter of our second transistor. Have our piece of wire and we need to put one end in the row with the emitter of the first transistor the other end in the row with the emitter of the second transistor. Just like that. This piece of wire is in the row with the emitter of the first transistor. It ends in the row with the emitter of the second transistor. To finish out the circuit, coming off the emitter of our bottom transistor, we need a 330 ohm resistor to our output LED with the cathode side toward ground. And then in that same run of wire, we need a 10K resistor to ground.
This will be a pull down resistor as far as the output goes. We're at the second transistor. I'll add in a little piece of wire so we can spread things out. It's going down the breadboard. We need our 330 ohm resistor. In the same row as the piece of wire that was just run. To our indicator LED with the cathode of this LED and the ground rail, the anode in the same row as the leg of this 330 ohm resistor. In this case, the short legs, the cathode, long legs, the anode. Just like that. And to finish things up, we need a 10K resistor in the same row going to ground. To ground. If we've done everything correctly, we should be able to add power to this circuit and still have the behavior associated with an, an inclusive OR gate. Connect power to the circuit. The way the OR gate works is whenever both of its inputs are low or false, its output is low or false. And whenever any of its outputs are high, the output should be high. Well, we can test that. Input 1 is high. The output's high. It's good. Input 2 is high. The output's high. That's good. And whenever both inputs are high, the OR gates out, an inclusive OR gates output is high. So we've successfully built an OR gate circuit centered around the functionality of two NPN style transistors. I hope this video is helpful. If so, please consider clicking like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.